Oseo. Oseo. Cherokee greeting, starting right off, alias uh, the bee woman. Alienation, two bees. I came upon them in the cabin, the angry one at the window, and the old bent one on the bed. The one at the window buzzing and buzzing, beating its wings on the window, beating the pane. The one on the bed, the silent one with the bent frame, alone on the counterpane. I didn't mean to kill them, but the one in the window wouldn't be waved back to his hive. The door was open and he knew it, and flew in for a moment, and then flew back away from his community. Something had alienated him, and he would not go back. Or perhaps the wounded one in the bed who kept him, I tried to get him to fasten on to the crumpled page of a local news, but he would not. And I must have hurt him in doing that, for he fell on the bed and died in an instant, stretching out his legs or arms, as if to his comrade or lover, who crawled a quarter inch toward him, and then hunched up into a very small furry ball, and was still and would not move again. As all at once outside, the hive hummed louder, with a million mild conformists, with wild antennas bent. Not one flew out to wake the dead. No messenger was sent. Wow. That's Lawrence Perlinghetti. <laughs> <laughs> and B stands for Beltane. And so that's what I'm celebrating today. Beltane, the fire of Bel. Who is Bel? This is an ancient Celtic, this ancient Celtic, um, celebration. Um, the Celts, well first I start with, with the Celts. Who are the Celts? Well they're people who ranged all the way from Eastern Europe all the way across Europe through the British Isles and here to Turtle Island, America. <clears throat> uh, Celtic is, the, the name Celtic is a Greek rendering of the Gaelic Calde. Calde uh, means the woodlanders and so ind indeed the middle portion of Europe and America are the woodlands. <laughs> North of, of the woodlands are the uh, conifer forests and they were occupied by a Samoy people or the Ugrit people who maybe have become the Scandinavians and so forth. Um, and that also the Celts are related to the Baticarians of India, um, very much so. And Beltane mainly is the fire of Bel. In uh, um, India it would be um, the celebration of the fire deity Agni, you know, or Agni Strobai, you know, and there's there's much in common, and in the language as well. The uh, Gaelic language is still carried on by people in the British Isles, mainly called the Irish Gaelic and Scots Gaelic, but many people throughout Europe are actually descendant from the earlier Celtic people there. And Bell, well, some think he's a god or something, but not so. He's more a quality, a quality of the sun. The sun is Grayan, Grayan Elf, and she is his mother, to say to speak. So he has called her Mox Savur. Uh, Bell is the son of Grayan. And for the Celts, they could entreat or pray to um, Grayan by way of Bell. So we could say Bell is the quality of light coming from the sun, is the quality of warmth coming from the sun, and even figured as the globe itself of that. <laughs> and very, very widespread was this veneration of Bell. And here in um, America, we call it Turtle Island America, if we lift off all the redactions, we've been seeing a lot of redactions on the news, um, <laughs> and to realize that uh, this country has been invaded and taken over lock, stock, and barrel by English, mainly the English. And uh, they harbor much ill will against the Celts and the descendants of the Celts, very namely the Irish. And most people do know that. <laughs> and so they've made their own version of histories here for various reasons that can be deciphered. But as I said, if you peel off the redaction, you will find that these people Celtic I'm referring to, have been here for a very, very long time. Uh, the one people that I know who still bear the evidence of that here in the Southwest are the Navajo. That's a dialectal 
name, they're the Dini. And they still have much of the pantheon and qualities of the language that would have stemmed from Celtic Americans. <clears throat> and so in the particular, what I'm doing here today, this is my illustration, this is the Eye of Bell. And uh, a while back, the Celtic Ensemble put out here an uh, album uh, that used my painting here um, called The Eye of Bell. It's, it seemed to, you know, like a bee's nest, stir up a certain fundamentalist Christians that seemed to harbor very, very much strange ill will towards even the name of Bell. <laughs> but Bell began in India as Sua. Sua, <clears throat> Sua is the daughter of light. Upatega Brish Ba Duyatar Debaha Suli Suli Stomam Yamase meaning uh, oh the daughter of light. He says Suli you're the daughter of light. I pray to you as I'm praying to a milk cow. <laughs> Somehow by the time that that got to uh, Egypt it began to change into actually Bel. In in Egypt uh, it's Ben. The N L becomes N in Egyptian. So the stone of Bel would be Ben Ben. <laughs> it sounds funny, other than it would have come from the Gaelic Bel Bel, Bel speaks. And then the Greek rendered it again into obelisk. So everybody knows the obelisk. So that is derived from the Egyptians. So it's the quality of light that was on the stone. In Egypt, they covered the stone with uh, gold and they put inscriptions on it. So Bel speaks when, when the sun shines on it. Here in this, this is a petroglyph in eastern California, just to east of Olancha of 395. <clears throat> there is much ogham throughout the Owens Valley here, and this is one uh, that I recognize there. <laughs> On the rock itself, of course, it's much, much smaller than this. It's surrounded by other anthropomorphs, maybe uh, bighorn sheep. They kind of look like that, and in the center of them, here is the eye of Bell. That's what we call a rebus. A rebus is where you can take letters and make them form kind of a picture of what the word says. So that's what this is. This is a rebus. And it's written in Ogham. Ogham is the Celtic, and it goes on into the Irish Scottish, a system of writing that's not phonetic. It's using, you know, digital spaces like that. And it does start with B, B, <laughs> B for Bell. So what we call alphabet for alphabeta, you know, is actually Beth Lois. B, the first two letters are B, L, Beth Lois, <laughs> like that. So B's do have it. And so <laughs> here, here, what we have, it just kind of translate this. The two, the two horns here, this would be D, the letter D. This would act as a stem line, so these two strokes coming above it would make D. This is what really caught my attention. This is an X. And it's a diphthong, a diphthong in the language. And there are two diphthongs that are used in this system. So this would be pronounced Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Actually pronounced Chia. Chia. And these a hoof here is another diphthong for Yua. 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 <clears throat> and the first stroke here is the B. And the two strokes here are the L. So it's saying, Chia, Bell, Yue is all seen. Divine Bell is all seen. And this was a standard for the Celts who would treat in any way um, Bell, you know, to call upon him. You up there, you know, look at me down here. <laughs> so all of this constitutes a real pervasive and standard. Um, concept or what you want to call it, you know, of the ancient Celts here in America. And there's from coast to coast, north to south, are these Celtic writings. We can refer to that way because they're all in the Gaelic and they're very legible and they're totally uh, understood in this system of Ogham. And, and so for my display here, I, I made a mock fire here for the fire. <laughs> In, in the celebration, the druid, that's, you know, the, the, uh, like the priest, that's the other thing, is that the, the Celtic people and the people in India have the same uh, tripart system of society. The warrior poets and the priest seers, the rishis and the druids, 
and the herds people, the sheep and the cattle. Uh, and that's what identifies that these are all of the same cultural people like that. <clears throat> so in, in, the, in the Celtic world, and this reportedly this, these were celebrated up until, you know, at least a hundred years ago or so in, in Ireland. Um, they drew it, you know, in the old fashioned way, you know, starts the fire and they built these bonfire like that. And for the cattle, they drive the cattle through the smoke and like that to uh, disinfect them, <clears throat> to, to get rid of the, the vermin. And people take it upon themselves, you know, to jump over the fire or run through the smoke. Also, in the community, all the uh, domestic fires were, doubts were put out. So people would take firebrands here from the bell fire, uh, uh, what they call it, um, the need fire, they called it the need fire, so they could take these firebrands back to their house and reignite whatever fires that they have there. So that's, you know, the, the basic. Uh, in, in India, um, these ceremonies have continued in much more of a priestly way, but the basics are there. And in the Navajo, at least up until the 19th century, very similar, very similar. So that's what I can say uh, until next time around.